All right, we're back here, folks, working on this uh, this dreadnought acoustic guitar. Today, uh, we're going to get started on the neck, and uh, really, we're going to be uh, gluing up just a blank. Uh, we're not going to be carving the neck right yet, but um, you know, first thing we need to do is cut out the uh, the peg head which is on a 15 degree angle we need to cut that out and glue that on uh, and the way I've been doing the, these necks is I do it as a you know a stacked neck so I'll cut the headstock off at the right angle and then I will cut down uh, the part of the neck that attaches to the body uh, we'll glue on a few blocks and create a stacked um, neck and then from there, once that's all glued up in its rough form, then we'll start shaping it with, with rasps and files and, and, and sanding and sanding machines and all the, that good stuff. So now the next stock, it comes in uh, mahogany. It comes uh, milled up pretty, pretty well. It's r still rough, sh rough lumber um, that we have to surface the top and bottom, but it's it's, it's a three inch by one inch piece of mahogany that's about 30 inches long. And this should be plenty of stock to, to, to make the neck up. Uh, in this particular guitar, we're just doing a bolt on neck. Uh, and I'm not doing a dovetail, so uh, there's a couple inches less material needed for that. But. Uh, Let's get started uh, planing this down. I'm going to use my joiner to joint uh, the top and bottom surfaces. And uh, I'm not really concerned uh, about the, uh, the sides being uh, perfectly parallel uh, because a lot of that material is just going to get removed anyways. Uh, but let's start. We'll start bringing this over to the joiner and we will joint both sides and then I will show you how we actually are going to lay out the cuts we're going to be making for the uh, the peg head. All right. Now this joiner is just a real small machine. It's a, I think it's a four inch machine. It can't take off a lot of material at once, uh, but that's okay. I'm only going to be removing, uh, I have it set now to about a 32nd of an inch and uh, that should be fine for now uh, to straighten it out and really I just want to take off this rough surface um, you know like I said we're gonna be straightening this thing out we're gonna be straightening it out once we start forming the actual shape in the neck and attaching it to the body and, and, and before we even put the fretboard on we'll be we'll be making it nice and straight so I'm not really too concerned with that now I just want to get it uh, nice and smooth get these roughs on marks off of it so that when we do our glue up uh, we get a nice mating surface so this throws a lot of dust so I'm going to turn on the dust collection and get this thing formed up So that joiner really does a nice job. You can see here, here's the rough sawn side of it uh, coming out of the bandsaw at the mill. It leaves a lot of saw marks, saw blade marks. It's real rough. And you can see that's four or five passes through the joiner. And, and that's real smooth. That's pretty smooth right there. And then the key is when using this planer is <clears throat> your infeed table is, in this case, according to my dial, a 32nd of an inch lower than my outfeed table so when I feed it in I want to keep pressure on this outside table as I feed it through because I don't want to keep pushing here because uh, that'll that'll make the board want to rise up a little bit so as soon as it hits the outboard table I want to keep pressure on that and uh, run it through nice and steady the whole way through so let's do a couple more passes see what we can get here
All right, that's that's pretty well jointed on both sides. Um, there's some imperfections there, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to clean that up uh, once we start moving along with forming this neck, and uh, that'll go away. So let's go and uh, lay out these lines here for the neck, for the head, uh, the peg head, and the other cuts we'll have to make. Let's get that laid out. So the angle that we are concerned with here is the is the angle between the neck itself and this peg head. So if you put the straight edge here on the bottom of the peg head and then a straight edge here using my bevel gauge I can find out exactly what that angle is. Right about there. So we're concerned with essentially this angle here. If I extend the line here, if I, if I extend this line of the bottom of the peg head all the way to the top uh, of where the fretboard will attach, where those two lines intersect, that's the angle I'm concerned with. All right, now that I have my bevel gauge set, I can find out what that angle is. If I use this little protractor here, uh, I could see it's about oh, 15, about 14 degrees. I also know from my plans that the peg head itself is roughly seven and a half inches. It's roughly seven and a half inches. I'm gonna find my tape. Here we go. So if I'm, it's roughly uh, my peg head. I want it to be about seven and a half inches. So what I'll do is I'll measure down seven and a half. Okay. I'll draw that line. Okay, I'm going to just transfer that line across the top here. And we will extend it as well this way. Now I'm going to take my bevel gauge and I'm going to draw that line. And I'm going to do the same on this side. And I'm just going to connect these now. Now the other thing is, uh, my peg head is going to be about a half inch wide. So what I want to do is just set my uh, little square here to a half inch. Make mark there. Mark there, and connect those lines, and this part's going to be waste. Alright, and we're going to do the same thing on this side. So this will wind up being my peg head. All right, so let's cut this out on the bandsaw. We're going to start by cutting this 15 degree angle first. All right, so I had some audio issues uh, at this point in the video, but uh, what I'm doing here is uh, I need to square up this surface that I just cut the bevel here for the peg head at 15 degrees so I'm just uh, using my block plane to get this surface here as straight as I possibly can and you can see I'll take uh, a square and I'm just trying to find high spots and I'm checking it with the peg head 
uh, and also, you know, I'll, you can see here I'm using my table saw as a, as a flat surface with some sandpaper glued down and really trying to flatten uh, the back of the peg head where it will mate up with that bevel that I cut in the, uh, the neck itself. And uh, this is kind of a process that goes back and forth uh, a couple times here. I'm using a uh, straight edge with some sandpaper attached to it but uh, really starting to or really trying to, to get that as flat as possible and as straight as possible and just continually just checking it and rechecking it and sanding it and re-sanding it and eventually <clears throat> I'll get that nice and straight until there's absolutely no gaps that I can tell uh, at all in, in the two mating surfaces. Alright, before I glue this up, <clears throat> I need to measure, measure down from my bevel, and to measure down the length of my fretboard to the body, which is about 11 inches, and I'm going to cut a 4 inch, 2, 3 inch block. Now for the glue up, um, really before you glue up you, you want to make sure that you sand uh, both of these, uh, the mating surfaces from, uh, as you see my bald head there, uh, from, you know, up to 220 grit. You want to have, uh, you don't want to just plane it uh, with a block plane and have it a smooth surface and glue it up just like that because you won't get good adhesion uh, with the glue. So. Uh, make sure you sand both surfaces well and uh, use plenty of glue. You'll get a lot of squeeze out, but you want to spread the glue and make sure you have it spread evenly across both surfaces. Uh, you mean, I'm using a call towards uh, right where the fretboard would start on the on the neck, just so because the, the glue acts as like uh, quite a bit of a lubricant, and that call helps it from sliding out of position too much. And uh, you want to get good clamping pressure. I'm using as many clamps as I can fit in there and trying to to um, squeeze those two pieces together quite well. Um, yeah, the cam clamps work well uh, for because they have such a deep throat there. Uh, and you know, just constantly check um, your mating surfaces, make sure there's no gaps. Uh, and glue squeeze out. You can see I'm cleaning that up. Uh, here you, you're gonna have a lot of it and the best thing like I've been saying is uh, the six inch ruler um, is, a, is a great tool for cleaning up uh, glue squeeze out uh, just rechecking uh, my clamping pressure here and uh, I believe uh, yeah I didn't like the way uh, some of these were were positioned so here I am repositioning it just so I can get a few more clamps in uh, and, and make sure I have really good uh, clamping pressure pressure as I keep saying uh, cleaning some more glue squeeze out uh, you know you'll think you'll have all the glue cleaned up you won't have any more squeeze out and you'll reposition some clamps and tighten it up and you'll get a little bit more squeezing out and that's where you know uh, you know you've uh, you've gotten a little bit more uh, better clamping pressure than you had before so you're going to want to see glue squeeze out across the entire length of that joint and then you, you know your clamping pressure is pretty good. And you can see here I'm, I'm squeezing in uh, another cam clamp and I'll put one in here on the other side as well just to create a little more space so I can get another clamp in there just more the merrier. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully this will do it and let this uh, dry overnight and come back to it uh, see how we did so for these uh, blocks here these M blocks I guess on the neck I'm not sure what you would call them but uh, I'm just going to clean them up on the sanding station and glue them up as well
All right, now it's time uh, that we glue up these uh, neck neck heel blocks, I guess we'll call them. And I'm uh, just going to, like a normal glue up, just uh, spread as much glue on both of the mating surfaces as possible. I actually put a little bit too much on this, and I had a ton of squeeze out. But that's okay. Uh, I'd rather have more glue than less glue and I'm just uh, you just clean it up as you go along and it's all good so I get I get about three clamps maybe four I can't remember but uh, just get very good uh, clamping pressure and make sure uh, there are no gaps whatsoever because that, that will be hard to fix and uh, as soon as that's glued up there I'll set that off to the side all right, so I've gotten, the, I've taken the neck out of the uh, clamps here, and uh, I'm straightening out uh, this joint here. Uh, I'm kind of in the way, but I'm trying to smooth and straighten out the transition. Here we'll get a better angle here. Uh, the transition of the peg head into the uh, where the fretboard will attach. So I'm just kind of working. Working that joint, uh, you know, it's it's, it's kind of rough from the glue up. I mean, it was the the mating surfaces between the in the glue joint were pretty pretty well straightened, but this is what'll be the top part of the neck, and uh, that really needs to be, you know, tuned up and made to made to be uh, as perfect as I can get it. All right, so. After uh, I've gotten this uh, pretty well flattened out, uh, I switch over to my number five plane and I just kind of work on straightening up the uh, the fretboard part of the neck here, uh, where the fretboard will attach. I just try and you know smooth out and get it as straight as possible. I mean, I'm not really finishing it off 100%, uh, but at this point, at this stage in, in, in the uh, in the assembly but uh, checking it for square and using some sandpaper when needed and once I know it's good then uh, we will move on to gluing on these blocks uh, but what I also have to do is uh, I need to trim off uh, these blocks and make sure that they made up to the, to the neck uh, just, to, just as perfect as any other glue up surface I'm doing so I'll use sandpaper the bandsaw and get those mating surfaces uh, really well um, made it up and you know I, I'll you know you might have to use your block plane as well to flatten out that surface and sandpaper you know really anything at your disposal to kind of get that surface really really flat and uh, and mating up just perfect check it constantly with my square making sure that I don't have to tune it up uh, anymore and just kind of go back and forth between the plane and some sandpaper checking it rechecking it just like everything else we're doing and also the bottom part of the the neck where I'm going to glue on these blocks I'm, I'm using my block plane here to, to straighten that out as well and uh, making sure that that's square and that when the the blocks are, are you know it's not just the blocks that I'm squaring up and planing those surfaces but you know doing the neck as well and then when it's all said and done like I said before uh, 220 grit sandpaper on both sides will prep up the surface real well uh, for the glue up part of it and uh, here I'm just drawing a line for where I want the uh, edge of the block to line up and I've got uh, I've got a call there on the bottom in my clamp so that uh, I don't mar up the surface and uh, I'm also going to put a call on top uh, of where those glue blocks are, are going to glue up to the neck because uh, just like with all the other glue ups you do, you know, the glue really acts as a uh, lubricant and it really starts sliding around uh, once you start gluing it up. So putting these calls in place just really help it from, uh, from moving around. Alright, so I just start, uh, once I know the surfaces are good, I'll just start spreading glue, clamp as usual, try and get uh, as best clamping pressure as you can get, 
clean up the squeeze out. I'm not going to show all the details of this. We've uh, we've seen this a million times in this video, but uh, that's the process there for gluing on those blocks. So this is about all, all I'm going to do here on the neck at this point. It's, it's completely glued up, it's, it's at the right uh, rough dimension and before I can work on attaching this to the body of the guitar, which you're going to do with uh, bolts, I'm going to, this will be a bolt on neck, um, I have to complete the body of the guitar, so I got to glue on the soundboard, do all the bracing for that. I got to do the rosette, cut the sound hole out, and glue that soundboard onto the guitar body. And at that point is when I will start um, working on attaching this to the body. Uh, I have to shape this uh, to match the contour of the body. Obviously, I have to shape the entire neck, glue on the pegboard. Uh, peg head, all that stuff, um, shape all this into the heel, and uh, there's a lot of work to do at that point, but um, that's it for now, uh, that'll, that'll be a fun video once we get that going, and uh, there'll be a lot more to do here in the meantime with, with getting the soundboard all prepped and glued on and everything like that, so uh, appreciate everybody watching, uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, see you all next time.